So now that we've talked a bit about the simple search stream example, let's take a step back and look more broadly at the types of operations that can appear in a stream. We'll use the simple search stream example to motivate the discussion, but we're going to talk more broadly about the types of methods. So we're going to start by talking about some of the common Java streams factory methods. We've talked about some of these before. We're going to look at them in a bit more detail here. So there's several common ways to create a stream. The most common way, which we are doing here and you'll do in your programming assignment, is to use Java collection factory methods to turn a collection into a stream. And there's a whole slew of different ways of doing this. So one way to do it is by using list of. So here we can say, let's make a list of words to find, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, et cetera. And once we have our list of words to find, list of strings of words to find, then we can convert that into a stream by just saying words to find dot stream. Piece of cake, very simple. This is the approach that we're using in our case study, but you could use other things if you want to. And of course, it's trivial to make this a parallel stream. Again, total overkill for this simple example, but if you had a very large list with lots of processing, that might be a worthwhile thing to do. Note, by the way, and this is something you'll need to know for your programming assignment, you can start out with something that appears to be a sequential stream, and then you can convert it at some point along the way in that stream to be a parallel stream. And the way you do that is you just put dot parallel. And the other th cool thing about this, this example doesn't show this, but it's trivial to do this. You can actually conditionally decide to turn a stream into a parallel stream or not. So you can start it out as a sequential stream, and then depending on Boolean parameters or other things like the phase of the moon or whatever, you can convert the stream that's a sequential stream into a parallel stream. Now, the thing to remember here is that whatever goes last is the way the entire stream is processed. So it might look like it's starting out as a sequential stream and then it's being converted at some point along the way into a parallel stream. That's actually not the way it works. Remember, streams are lazy. So when it hits the terminal operation, which I've omitted in this simple example, then it'll take a look and say, is this a sequential stream or a parallel stream? And whatever it is, is what it's going to be run as in its entirety. So that's an important thing to remember here, that this is going to be sticky and so it'll, it'll influence the behavior. By the way, you can also, as it turns out, start out with it in parallel and turn it to sequential. Kind of a strange thing to do, but it's possible to do that. Whichever, th you just say dot sequential to get that behavior. Whichever thing occurs last, the entire stream is processed in that manner. Another thing you can use is you can use the stream support dot stream factory method. And this is actually something else that we are going to show as we look more deeply into this simple search stream example. So in this particular case, we're going to do a bunch of stuff, which is more complicated to explain here than I want to go over at the moment. But basically, we're going to create a splitterator. We'll talk what a splitterator is later. It's a way of taking input and breaking it up into a chunks. And we're going to make that be the input to the stream support dot stream method, which will then create a stream, either a parallel stream or a sequential stream, using the splitterator to split things up into chunks. And we'll talk about that later. <clears throat> and this is that method. This is stream support dot stream, which takes a splitterator and a Boolean, and it'll make either a sequential or parallel stream. Now, what's interesting to note about this is that the collection interface, which is what all the Java collections in the Java collections framework implement, either directly or indirectly, they all have support to convert a collection into a stream. And you can see here that there's the stream and the parallel stream factory methods. These are default methods, which means that they, they will always exist for all collections. And you can see what they do is they call stream support dot stream using the splitterator method, which we'll talk about later, to convert the collection into a splitterator. And then they either make it a sequential stream if it's false as the second parameter or a parallel stream if it's true as the second parameter. And very powerful, very useful stuff. And so that's what we do here. We make ourselves a stream containing all the phrases that match in our input string. And we'll come and look at that in more detail when we get into the code more. You can also convert arrays into streams. And there's a couple different ways to do that. So let's say we have an array of strings, A, B, C, D, E. We can say arrays.stream, which will make a stream of strings. 
And once we have the stream of strings, we can print them out either by using a lambda expression or using a method reference. Same difference, really. As a general rule of thumb, prefer to use method references whenever you can. They're cleaner. They are less visually, uh, they're less visually cluttered, maybe is the best way to put it. So use the, the method reference whenever you can. Remember that your IDE, either IntelliJ or Android Studio, will automatically convert from a lambda expression to a method reference if that conversion can be done. And so keep an eye out for that. You can also use the static factor method defined on stream called the of method. So here we have our string array again. We can say stream of, give it the array. We get a stream. And then once again, we can print it out either using lambda expressions or method references. So that's the end of the discussion of the most common Java streams factory methods. These are the ones you need to know, and you'll also get to use some of these in your upcoming programming assignments.